And welcome Flip Clock fans. You're looking at a Copal Model 227 collection in Flip Clock Fan Studios. And this is the newest edition. This black with a white face. I call this the Black Beauty. I've been wanting one of these for a while. It's got a formal look to it. It reminds me of a tuxedo. But as you can see here, it's got some significant issues. We're going to go over those together today and see if we can get this fixed. But let's take a closer look first. Copal Model 227. This particular clock was found on eBay and I got it for a good price. The seller said that the light works and the clock works when plugged in. So I would assume that the alarm does not work. We can see that the pictures were very up front. There's some significant dirt here, possible damage, which is why I probably got it for a good deal. So here we go, the Copal Model 227 in black. You know, I've always wanted one of these white faces. I wanted to find out more about them, see if they were painted or how they did that. We'll plug it in first, take a look. We see that the light is working fantastically. The operation indicator is spinning away. And we'll do a quick check of the alarm here. Okay, the click means it should be going off when you hear the click there. That's a switch being released that should allow the alarm to go, and it doesn't. Now it flips just fine. Everything seems to be in order there. So we're going to take a look about how to get this clock apart. Now, many of you have seen this many times before, and I apologize, but there may be some first-time visitors who've never seen this before. So I like to use Gorilla Tape on these knobs. Gorilla Tape. I do believe it's the best way to do this. You get a grip on the knob here without causing any damage. For the toughest jobs on planet Earth. And you wrap it around there pretty tight to get a good grip. And just pull straight away. Comes off clean, no damage. That's the way to do it. Okay, so this sometimes you have to use Gorilla Tape on that too, but that one came off very nicely. Remove the alarm button here. Just pull straight up. No problem there. All right, we're going to use a piece of tape to get the face off. Now, the last time I did this was just actually just the last video. I don't think I specified the amount of force you should use when you do this. So you put the tape on the side there, cover it over a little bit here, and you fold it to the side. You're not pulling with a, a large amount of force. You're just releasing the tab that's set into the side. And then I push it off here to get it off the other end. At this point, I just remove the tape and it doesn't cause any damage at all to the plastic. There's no scratching, no marring. But as you can see, this is also in pretty rough shape. I'm trying to figure out what that is. It, it looks like dirt, but it also looks like a little bit more. I can see some evidence of damage. I hate, hate to see that, but we'll see what we can do about that. So to get it apart, as you all may know, you just take this one off here. That allows you to get the cover off. And to remove this, we're just going to put a little pressure with the thumb. Right where my left thumb is, I'm pushing down and then pulling away. And then on this side, you do the same. You push down. There's tabs that you're releasing there. I'm just working it out here. There's no rush. You shouldn't have to force anything when you're doing this once you get it to this stage. Loose the wire there. Comes right off. Now there you can see the alarm right there dead center. That's not working. We're going to get into that. Now I've never worked on one of these alarms before, so we're going to try to figure that out here. See if I can figure out why it's not working. It's either a mechanical problem or electrical connection problem there. 
So we just remove the two screws to get the mechanism out. Gently pull it away. Now the first thing we see is these flip tiles seem to be in really good condition. And I've noticed that on the white ones, the tines don't dig in so much into the top of the tiles as with the black ones. Now the light's looking good, the motor's spinning freely. Really a dust-free clock on the inside there. And here's the front piece. That's what I've really been looking forward to, to get one of these. And you can see they use some brown glue to secure that. But it fairly easily breaks away. I'm glad they didn't use the black glue. There's some horrid black glue that they use that actually fuses the plastic. This is just sticks the plastic. And there it is, the white front piece. It's actually molded plastic. I didn't know if, if it were painted or if it was the white plastic, so now I know. That one looks pretty. We can use that regardless of what happens here. So these two pieces, we've got to work on these. And I'll show you how I do that. Got to go to my laboratory here. We're using Dawn dishwashing liquid and copious amounts of water. So you want to not introduce any scratches in this process and by using your hands only in soap and water, you're going to get it clean without causing any problems. I'm rinsing well here. I've washed it more than I show here, but I'm seeing issues. Now we see what I'm dealing with here. We've got sort of a matte blur finish here with pitting. It's in rough shape. It's clean now, but we've got some serious issues with this clock. Otherwise, the case is in good shape. There's no cracks. So how are we going to fix this? We're going to try McGuire's Plastics Polish. That's going to be our first line of defense. I'm going to give you some tips, and you can take them for what they're worth. They're coming from experience. There's going to be people who want to take a buffing wheel to this, and I have been one of those people. The point is to save time and maybe to get a better finish, but what I have found is that that generates too much heat. You're going to warp the case, possibly, if you're not careful. You're going to get a really hyper-gloss, which isn't really natural. Now, this is, I'm not showing all the amount of time I spent on this. I just spent some time on it, and I'm, I'm just buffing it out real fast here so I can get a look at the process and see where we're at. And unfortunately, I'm not liking what I see here. So while it did shine up, you can see it has pitted pretty badly. Now, the tendency is going, is going to be to want to go in there and sand that down. But I'm using something that's going to work. It's toothpaste. That's got some grit in it. And we're going to use baking soda to give it more of a grit. So yes, you can use a fine grit sandpaper, but I would highly discourage that. And that's from experience. And I'll tell you, you see how I'm holding that? I'm holding that loose because... The tendency is going to want to be hold it real tight so that you can get some aggressiveness on there and get the, those pits out of there. But that's going to fatigue that plastic, and that will break. You wouldn't think it would, but it, it's done that on me before. But again, the sandpaper, a lot of times you're going to introduce scratches that are just horribly hard to get out of there. So while this takes a lot more time, ultimately you're going to get the job done. Now, you see, now we're ready for the plastics polish again. Now that we've got most of the pitting out of there, we've got it down pretty good. Now let's turn our attention back to the mechanism here. Because we're going to want to get this alarm working. Why? I don't know. There are awful, terrible alarms. But we're going to get it working. So what I've done is I've taken this back plate off of this alarm here to take a look at how this is constructed. It's very simple. This little metal plate here with the little spring arms is going to vibrate against that metal. Now, at first I thought, well, maybe these arms here need to be rebent. So I played with that a little bit. I really don't think I bent them that much. I have taken the spring off there. There's a spring between that metal plate and this little, this little thing. Now look at this. You see what it's doing? It's energized right now. You see how it wants to bounce. But here's the exterior plate that holds that plate. And I'm going to take a toothpick and try to clean that out. Now, 
So at this point, I started thinking, well, wait a minute, what if it just needs a drop of oil right there? And if you guys ever have one of these problems, I want you to try that first. Just put a drop of oil without taking anything apart. I'm suspecting that that might actually fix the alarm. I have no way of proving that. And I'm glad I took it apart because I wanted to see what was going on. It didn't harm anything. I want not a lot of oil there. Now you can see the spring that I was talking about that's on top of that plate. And we just put this back and reassemble. Nothing hard here. I didn't have to disconnect any electronics or anything like that. We'll test that out in a second. See, there's our two holes. We're going to put it back in the case. Pretty simple clock to disassemble and reassemble. I think it's important to kind of comment on these screws. A lot of people try to tighten them down like they're working on a SpaceX project or something. And you don't need to do that. You don't need to crank these screws down. That causes a lot of cracks in these clocks. Thankfully, this one didn't, didn't have that done. I don't think it had ever been opened before. That's the way I like them. So we're getting her back together. I put a little drop of oil on this one here because it's metal on metal, that metal clip. That way it'll come off easier in the future. And our alarm button. Just pushes back down, and all that's left is we need to put the screw in there to hold the case in. It doesn't really need that screw. Keeps kids out, I guess. We'll take a look here, test this alarm. Working great. Flipping fine. And there it is. Opal Model 227 in black with a white face. My formal looking clock. It's not perfect, but it's presentable, and that's the way I want to keep it. We can work on it more later if we want to, but I like it. Fits right in. Except for some of you. I know it's bothering you. So we'll fix it. There you go. All we need now is to get a white one. Well, there it is, Copal Model 227. That's my little black beauty. Turned out pretty good. I'm glad I got it. Hope this helps somebody if you're having a problem with your alarm. Well, thanks for taking the time.